Summary of The Good Enough Job Reclaiming Life from Work by Simone Stolsoff, written and narrated by Jenky Mind Introduction The Good Enough Job presents a revolutionary manual for rediscovering a life that extends beyond the confines of corporate structures. Through a captivating blend of narratives and actionable guidance, you will uncover the methods to liberate yourself from the clutches of burnout and attain an authentic equilibrium between your professional and personal spheres. Back in the 1930s, the visionary economist John Maynard Keynes envisioned a future where, by 2030, we would only toil 15 hours weekly, leaving ample room for leisure, the ultimate emblem of status and contentment. However, the paradigm has shifted, where we once traded our wealth for leisure, we now find ourselves trading our precious leisure for work. This is particularly evident in the United States, where individuals are investing more hours in their labor than ever before. On average, Americans dedicate three hours more per week to work than the notoriously overworked Japanese, six hours more than the French, and a staggering eight hours more than the Germans. In essence, our perspective on work has transformed. No longer viewed as a mere obligation to support our personal lives during moments of respite, work has evolved into an all-encompassing mission that shapes our very identities. This phenomenon can aptly be termed as workism. Yet, the conundrum remains, while work serves as the means to meet our financial obligations, how can we effectively balance our pursuit of meaningful vocations without allowing them to consume us entirely? This is where the concept of the good enough job comes into play. Drawing inspiration from the principles of good enough parenting, which counteracts the pressure to perceive minor, inevitable setbacks in child-rearing as personal inadequacies, this ideology posits that a job need not, and should not, constitute your entire universe. Such an approach inevitably leads to burnout and detrimental effects on mental well-being. Within the pages of this audiobook, you will encounter four illuminating epiphanies drawn from diverse realms, ranging from the realm of Michelin-starred culinary excellence to the sprawling arena of big tech. These revelations will equip you with the tools to retrieve your existence from the grasp of relentless work and channel your focus towards the aspects that hold genuine significance. Chapter 1, Unraveling the Formula for Burnout, The Quest for Self-Worth In the world of culinary excellence, the cautionary tale of burnout and the pursuit of self-worth finds its embodiment in the journey of Indian-American chef Divya Singh. Within the confines of the restaurant, where she embarked as a culinary intern, Divya's journey unfolded, fraught with revelations about the perils of misplaced self-worth. Guided by her passion, Divya identified a unique avenue to contribute by crafting innovative dairy-free gastronomic creations. Her ingenuity sparked tears of appreciation from patrons and culminated in a groundbreaking proposal to the establishment's head chef, Stephen Fisher. Thus emerged Pramer, an enterprise co-owned by Divya and Fisher, dedicated to dairy-free products. Mentored by Fisher's sagacity, Divya soared to prominence, her name gracing the illustrious Forbes 30 Under 30 list. Yet, as the enterprise expanded its horizons, tensions mounted. The arena of Pramer became a battleground for investor deliberations, personnel disputes, and an ultimate clash surrounding a fresh product line. This maelstrom of challenges led Divya to relinquish her role within Pramer. Rather than succumbing to the weight of Fisher's adverse reaction to her decision, Divya elected a different path. A hiatus was her choice, a six-week sojourn to Thailand, where she rekindled her connection with personal passions, relished outdoor exploits, and immersed herself in culinary endeavors. This interlude granted her a vital respite to safeguard her mental well-being. Upon her re-entry into the culinary realm, Divya confronted another unforeseen twist. Fisher had diluted her 50% ownership stake in Pramer. An arduous legal battle ensued, culminating in Divya's triumph to reclaim her rightful shares. With this victory, she finally severed her ties with Pramer, a journey marked by resilience and determination. Today, Divya revels in a life of contentment residing within a harmonious cooperative community in Portland. 
Here, she orchestrates a flourishing culinary enterprise while also carving out time for her diverse interests. Through her lived experience, Divya grasps the significance of delineating boundaries, acknowledging intrinsic worth, and nurturing a harmonious equilibrium between vocational and personal domains. In moments of adversity, Divya's narrative serves as a beacon of wisdom. It underscores the importance of stepping back from the fray to recalibrate priorities. Had she not embraced the pivotal decision to temporarily halt her high-pressure career, the rewarding and fulfilling life she presently enjoys might have remained elusive. Chapter 2 – Ascending Beyond Workism – The Power of Community Work, though capable of providing fulfillment, can also be an overwhelming force, especially when devoid of the support structures found in community. This truth is vividly exemplified in the journey of social scientist Ryan Burge. Diving into the troves of data offered by the General Social Survey in 2018, Ryan embarked on a quest centered around the evolution of organized religion. His focus was set on the rise of the knowns, those who declare no religious affiliation. What he unearthed was a monumental revelation, the knowns had, for the first time, overtaken evangelicals and Catholics in number. This revelation, while sweeping the discourse, struck a personal chord for Ryan. Beyond his identity as a social scientist, he also assumed the role of a pastor at First Baptist, a modest congregation grappling with dwindling attendance. It became apparent that the human yearning for a sense of belonging, purpose, and identity, once bestowed by religious institutions, was now finding its solace in the realm of the workplace. Ryan pinpointed three catalysts behind this shift. Firstly, the burgeoning influence of the Internet has facilitated the discovery of online communities for doubters, offering an escape from the stifling silence often experienced while questioning faith. Platforms such as the Atheism subreddit, boasting 2.7 million members, provide an avenue for those seeking camaraderie beyond conventional beliefs. Secondly, the entwinement of religion with political conservatism, particularly within Christianity, has estranged liberals from organized religious institutions. This shift has caused a noteworthy transformation among white weekly churchgoers, with a majority transitioning from 55% Democratic alignment in 1972 to a 62% Republican tilt by 2021. Lastly, millennials are grappling with mounting social isolation. As community group engagement diminishes, the void is increasingly being filled by the workplace, evolving into a primary source of purpose. However, Ryan's exploration of the data illuminated a critical flaw in this approach, and over-reliance on work can lead to neglecting other vital dimensions of life. In response, a remedy surfaces, one need not necessarily possess religious affiliation, but can glean wisdom from the playbook of religion. Historically, religious traditions have sought to address a fundamental query, what confers value upon our lives? In an era where religious adherence is waning, individuals are turning to work for answers. Yet, there exists a plethora of factors that infuse life with worth, transcending the dimensions of salary and office hours. Participating in a musical ensemble, joining a bowling league, or sharing a potluck supper with friends are just a few examples. By diversifying the sources from which fulfillment is derived, incorporating community-based endeavors, one can wrest their existence from the grasp of unpredictable superiors or the vagaries of the marketplace. This proactive stance fosters a formidable buffer against the capricious tides of life's unforeseen twists and turns. Chapter 3 – The Seeds of Workism – A Prelude in Youth the year 1999 witnessed the emergence of Megan Greenwell, an audacious high school sophomore, into the realm of journalism. A plunge into the world of student newspapers led her on a captivating investigation into the disturbing depths of modern-day slavery. This marked the inception of a remarkable trajectory that would propel her to esteemed media platforms, eventually granting her the distinction of being the first female editor-in-chief of the widely acclaimed sports blog Deadspin. Yet, as Megan's professional ascent surged, so did the weight of her stress. 
Her enviable resume, replete with contributions to prestigious outlets like Good, ESPN, and New York, stood in stark contrast to the mounting burnout she grappled with. The pinnacle of this exhaustion arrived shortly after she embraced the role of interim editor-in-chief at Wired, prompting her eventual decision to step down. However, Megan's burnout transcended the parameters of mere overexertion. It was emblematic of a cultural norm that intertwined self-worth with ceaseless productivity. Her professional identity had become so inextricably entwined with her sense of self that detaching from her career felt akin to relinquishing a vital part of her essence. Does this narrative resonate with you? You're not alone. Psychologist Janet Koretz has crossed paths with numerous high-achieving individuals, akin to Megan, who experience a sense of aimlessness once they've checked off all the boxes on their career checklist. The underlying culprit, according to Koretz, lies in a societal culture that casts work as an eternal marathon while relegating personal time to the sidelines. To surmount the clutches of workism, Koretz proposes the concept of time sanctuaries, pockets of personal moments wherein one can delve into their authentic self beyond the scope of their occupation. However, the journey doesn't conclude there. The unrelenting drive of high achievers can inadvertently transform hobbies into a different variant of work. Thus, it becomes imperative to infuse life with unstructured play, granting curiosity and wonder the spotlight without the looming pressure of productivity. This revelation sparked a profound transformation within Megan. Having long associated success exclusively with professional milestones, she found herself grappling with feelings of being an imposter despite her commendable accomplishments. This internal identity crisis reached its zenith during her sabbatical, unearthing an enduring inner conflict between the yearning for productivity and the necessity for relaxation. Even nine months into her hiatus, Megan was embroiled in a tussle against her workaholic tendencies. Her motivation for work became a multifaceted amalgamation of genuine passion, financial concerns, and residual fears stemming from a past marked by instability. However, while her lens on the world remained tinted by her professional perspective, an unspoken desire for more beyond work began to stir within her. Megan's odyssey serves as a poignant reminder that workism can insidiously implant itself early in our lives, shaping our identity and self-worth throughout our growth. The pursuit of work-life equilibrium transcends the realm of careers, it's an exploration of our essence beyond the confines of office walls. And now, as we navigate the corridors of work culture, it becomes imperative to disentangle our lives from the paradigm of the corporate family. In the ensuing chapters, we shall delve into the reasons underlying this crucial disentanglement. Chapter 4, The Illusion of Work Family, Navigating Boundaries Have you ever experienced a workplace where camaraderie runs so deep that it feels like an extension of your own family? Taylor Moore certainly did during his tenure at Kickstarter. Immersed in a startup culture that prioritized shared principles over profit margins, Taylor and his colleagues forged connections over the organization's resolute mission to champion artists. This collective purpose rendered the office a welcoming, familial haven. However, this aura of warmth evolved into a testing ground when the company's actions strayed from its professed values. The trust and safety team at Kickstarter initially sanctioned a satirical graphic novel titled Always Punch Nazis in 2018. Yet, it was abruptly removed after encountering backlash from right-wing media outlets, sparking an internal uproar. The decision seemed to be swayed by external pressures, contradicting Kickstarter's espoused principles. The situation reached a boiling point with the termination of Justine Lai, an employee who had voiced concern about the decision. Her dismissal ignited a call for unionization, an avenue to safeguard the company's heart and soul. Leading this unionization endeavor were Taylor and Clarissa Redwine, motivated by their profound affinity for the company's values. Their objective was to restore equilibrium and preserve Kickstarter's unique spirit. However, their endeavors were met not with applause, but with an unceremonious exit from the organization. 
This, in turn, prompted them to lodge grievances against the very entity they had once revered. In essence, while the sense of belonging in a workplace may evoke warmth and comfort, it's imperative to demarcate boundaries. Even within the most tightly knit professional setting, it remains paramount to acknowledge that, ultimately, it is still a business. When circumstances demand, the imperative of the bottom line often supersedes other considerations. Ultimately, work constitutes a singular facet of life, it does not encompass its entirety. Thus, it is incumbent upon us to liberate ourselves from the allure of corporate rhetoric that seeks to persuade us otherwise. Recognizing that our workplace is not synonymous with our actual family allows us to recalibrate our focus and priorities. This acknowledgement does not translate to a lack of dedication to our work, rather, it signifies the establishment of essential limits and the pursuit of fulfillment beyond the constraints of our job designations and performance metrics. So, embrace the opportunity to rekindle neglected hobbies, invest quality time with cherished ones, and nurture relationships that extend beyond the office realm. The present moment is ideal for embracing personal happiness on an unprecedented scale. Summary Work is a facet of life, not its defining essence, for it exists within the boundaries of reality, not as an all-encompassing force. Regardless of whether you assume a subordinate role or command the reins of your own enterprise, it's paramount to bear in mind that your professional journey constitutes merely a chapter within the grand narrative of your existence. Embrace the opportunity to turn the pages of this book and craft a narrative that extends beyond the confines of your career, encompassing the myriad facets that hold genuine significance to you. This audiobook summary was brought to you by Janky Mind. We hope you enjoyed it.